What is narcissistic empathy? Can borderlines and narcissists have empathy? Is there hope for them to learn empathy? Let's talk about it. Judge me for my feelings, not my actions. Hi, this is Mike, and this is the One Thing That Heals BPD and NPD Abuse channel. And I just finished a book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend, which you can find on Amazon and Kindle, and will eventually be in audible, audiobooks.thunderwizard.com. And I want to talk to you about empathy. What is narcissistic empathy? Um, I talked about this in one of my recent videos uh, about the difference between BPD and NPD. That was a longer video. So let's just talk about empathy. This is really important. It's really important to you if you're watching this. By the way, this channel and this video is designed for people who have survived abusive romantic relationships or if you're currently in a romantic relationship with a cluster B, specifically a borderline or a narcissist or comorbid both. Because this whole, everything revolves around this, the perception of empathy. So uh, in doing a little bit of research for this video, of course, I wanted to see what the psychiatric and psychological um, world has to say about it. By the way, before I go any further, I just need to give a, a small disclaimer. Again, this video is not for borderlines. But if you are somebody that does suffer from BPD, there is treatment. You can recover and you can learn to have empathy and act empathetically. And um, if you, you know, get some help, and put real effort into it, uh, it'll take some time, but you'll be able to uh, recover from uh, being active, uh, acting in such toxic ways. Um, having said that, if you've been in a relationship with a borderline and or narcissist, there really is no kind of hell that's worse. And in my experience, having done my channel for a few years now, and of course interacting with borderlines in my personal life, it has come to my attention that the vast majority of borderlines really do not understand what empathy is. And even when they believe that they have empathy, they misinterpret what that means. But worse than that, so do codependents. Codependents believe that they are driven by empathy and um, that actually isn't true either. So, as I said, I did a little bit of research. Uh, three types of empathy uh, based on one person who said there's emotional contagion, which means if you're standing next to somebody and they laugh, you laugh. You're, you're, st you're standing next to somebody and they start to cry, then you start to cry. And um, then there's emotional empathy, which I don't even know what the hell that word means. Emotional empathy. That I guess that means that you have a feeling of compassion towards somebody else. And then there's cognitive empathy, according to, again, to the professionals, where it's sort of like in your head, you can intellectualize the idea of, oh yeah, getting stabbed in the eye with an ice pick. Yeah, I can understand why that's something somebody wouldn't want. And then my favorite one <laughs> is performative empathy. And apparently this is something that uh, narcissists and borderlines do uh, sometimes is called performative empathy. It's a nonsense word because it just basically means fake empathy. It means you go out in public and you pretend to have empathy for other people and you show empathy but you don't have any and you're doing it um, to hide the fact that you know you've got somebody back home uh, you know tied to the radiator. You know you don't have any feelings for them, you don't give a crap about them, but you go out in public and pretend like you do and you take actions to make other people think you care about them when in reality you don't. So it's not empathy. Here's why this whole discussion is a problem and specifically for you if you're watching this because you have asked this question and you continue to ask this question. Does my borderline really care about me? Does my narcissist love me? Can they love me? Did they ever really love me? Do they know the pain that they've caused me? 
Do they think back on what happened and are they sorry for the pain that they've caused me? So this question of empathy is incredibly important. Now, for me, the sad part of the discussion when you go on to YouTube and you want to type in, you know, do narcissists have empathy and all that kind of stuff. And the stuff that comes up uh, when you listen to therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, to me, actually does more damage than it does good. Because the assumption, bear in mind, even professionals have unconscious assumptions, if this, then that. And if we're not able to really look at what our assumptions are, we can't really learn or grow. So you've got a lot of people out there, and don't get me wrong, I got nothing against uh, therapists. Uh, I myself have a therapist. So it's not that I have anything against therapy. It's just that therapists are just like everybody else. They're human and they have agendas, they have biases, and they have unconscious assumptions. So the unconscious assumption, whenever we are talking about, do narcissists have empathy? Do borderlines have empathy? The unconscious assumption is that if they have an emotion that we can label as empathy, if they have an emotion of compassion for somebody else, an emotion that makes them feel for the pain of others, the assumption is that that is what gives people the ability to be loving and kind. And again, the, again it's a childish, you know, dualistic uh, way of looking at it. Then the opposite is that, well, if they don't have, that, have the feeling of empathy, then they can't be kind to you. They can't, they don't understand it, so they can't do it. So that assumes that if, that if somebody has the feeling of empathy, they won't hurt you. This is why you keep asking the question, does my borderline care about me? Does my borderline love me? Does my borderline really have empathy for me? Do they have compassion for me? Do they know how badly they hurt me? I understand this. You know, throughout uh, a lot of my earlier life, um, you know, even in just regular relationships, if I got my feelings hurt, What I would do is I would want to sit the person down and make sure they understood how badly they had hurt me. And I wanted them to consciously acknowledge that they had done something to hurt me. And I was doing that because I was running off this unconscious belief, just like you, that if they knew that what they did was hurtful to me, and they could verbalize it and intellectually assent to it, then they would stop doing it. That was my belief. So this idea that narcissists have no empathy and therefore that's why they're so destructive, the idea that, well, they because they, they can't feel anything for you, they don't know that they're hurting you or they don't care. So there's another assumption. If they can feel empathy for you, or even if they can understand that what they're doing is hurtful to you, your assumption is they'll stop. This is narcissistic on your part. You are projecting onto somebody else how you are. I mentioned uh, actually four types of empathy according to at least one mental health professional who talked about emotional contagion as being empathy. And, uh, And then she cited babies in cribs, that if one baby starts to cry, another baby will cry, and then some babies won't, and then that the assumption is the baby that doesn't cry, it doesn't have any empathy, and the baby that does cry does have empathy, but emotional contagion, that's like, I mean, it's contagious. And all that means is that, that uh, hearing or f- experiencing somebody else's feeling triggers a similar feeling in you. You know, the baby that, you know, that's next to another baby that's crying, if that baby starts crying, it doesn't mean that baby is thinking, oh my God, this other baby is having a hard time. Hey, can somebody help? We need to help this baby. All that's happening is that baby just gets uncomfortable and starts crying for its own reasons. It's not empathetic. It's completely narcissistic. But it shows the the projection that we have. Um, Those of us who have been in this, we project onto others. Now, this is probably the main problem with why you are in pain, why you're still in your relationship. Again, I talk about this in my book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend, is that 
you project onto your abuser the way that you feel. So you think if you can get them to consciously understand things the way you do, that they will respond to that, either that feeling or that understanding the same way you do, which is why you are so confused when they don't. How many times have you been able to show and prove to your borderline girlfriend, your narcissist boyfriend, that what they've done really hurt you, and there have been times when they've come and apologized profusely. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Uh, I just have so many problems. Please take me back. I'll never do it again. They seem to be showing empathy, and they might be full of tears. They might even be feeling it. Maybe it's performative empathy. Maybe it's all fake. Maybe it's real. Point is, it doesn't matter. It shows our infantile, narcissistic uh, need to have our own feelings and have somebody experience our feelings. People who think this way, I'm in a lot of pain, I want you to feel my pain, therefore you will take care of me. That is what infants do. That's why infants cry. They cry because a, you know, a non-disordered mother feels the cry and she's overwhelmed with this feeling of empathy. In fact, she has to go and fix the baby because the sound of the baby crying is so uncomfortable for her. She has to, you know, this is your codependence. You're this way with your borderline. Your borderline's in pain. Your narcissist is crying once again. He's over his spilt milk. And you actually have emotional contagion which you conflate with empathy. You're looking at your abuser who is now in a vulnerable state. They're crying. They're begging for your help. You were really angry a second ago, but now you see how much pain they're in. The emotional contagion takes over you, which you conflate with empathy. This is, by the way, what is going on with people who call themselves super empaths. They say they walk into a room and they can't help but feel other people's feelings. This isn't a sign of, this isn't a good sign. This isn't a sign of some kind of spiritual evolution. This is a sign of an infant with no boundaries. When somebody else is having a feeling and you have such a small identity within yourself that you can't help but start to be infected by their emotion and then share it, that's bad. There's nothing good about that. That doesn't, that's not a sign of compassion. That's a sign of, you know, somebody who's very immature and undeveloped. Borderlines are, are notorious for this. Uh, borderlines will say, I am full of empathy. You don't understand. I walked in, I saw how much pain you're in, and I started crying too, because your pain made me feel pain. And, you know, as long as it's, as long as they, and you too, as the as the uh, the codependent, as long as you get off on the experience of the emotion, and as long as it doesn't violate any of your narcissistic needs at the moment, it's a high. All of the you know the chemicals that go through the body as a result of having all of those feelings that doesn't have anything to do with empathy. If I made my point, empathy is when. Regardless of how you're feeling, you have the maturity and you have the discipline to act in a way that is objectively constructive, healing, and helpful for the other person. And you're doing it for the only outcome of that person being benefited because they need it not because you want anything. It doesn't mean you, you're in a bad mood and you do it anyway and then you hold it against them, codependent. That is not empathy either because now you have an agenda. You now have a list. You know, you know how many times I took care of you and you know how much money I've given to you. You remember how many times I took you to the... That's not empathy. That's, you have a selfish agenda attached to it. That's narcissistic. Empathy is when you truly are doing only what's in the best interest of the other person. Those of you who watch this, who you get really caught up, you, you can't leave your borderline. People say this all the time. I understand it, by the way. I felt the same way myself. They say, but if I leave her, she's going to commit suicide. If I leave her, she's going to feel awful and she's going to hate me and, and I don't want her to be in pain. 
And you think that's empathy. It's not. It's narcissistic empathy. That is all about how your inability to tolerate your own negative feelings, number one, you are fixing the other person so you don't have to feel bad. It's very codependent, happens all the time, and it has nothing to do with empathy. And also, you're doing it because you want, you still want them to love you, you still want them to accept you. True empathy, if you understand what, you know, for instance, if there is an alcoholic on the street, you walk past your, your apartment building and there's this alcoholic, you know, in his own filth, you know, puking on himself. And he uh, says, hey, can I please have some money? Uh, I really need to eat or worse yet. Can you can I come? Can you take me in and, and can can you feed me and can I have a shower? And you think that the empathic thing to do is to take the person in, shower them, give them some new shoes, give them some food and maybe give them a hundred bucks. You think you're helping that person. If you're doing that because you can't tolerate the thought of this person being in pain, then that's not empathy. Because the kindest thing you can do for that individual, if you have the understanding of what's going on with them, is to say to them, you know what, there's a mission down the street. If you go there, they'll clean you up, they'll uh, give you a job. Oh, I don't want to go there, there's too many rules. Can I just stay on your couch for a couple of days? So the actual kind thing to do is to do the difficult thing to do, which is to understand what is in the person's best interest. It's in that alcoholic's best interest to get their ass to, you know, the, the mission down the street and to go through all of that difficulty and sleep on a cot next to some other, you know, homeless person and, you know, and have to then get up off their ass and earn their keep in the place and be able... That's the kindest thing you can do for them because that's the best thing for them. Meeting their immediate needs because it makes you feel better or because you can't tolerate somebody being in pain or because you just can't say no to somebody. That's not empathy. That's completely, totally narcissistic. So uh, anyway, I got the book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend, and you can learn a lot about uh, empathy there. I don't use the word narcissistic empathy because I just made it up. But basically, narcissistic empathy could be a feeling. You could be filled with a feeling of empathy for somebody, and it means zero. Your borderline, especially borderlines, narcissists, this, this can be the case with narcissists too, but it's more common with borderlines. Borderlines can be absolutely overwhelmed with a feeling they think is empathy, and they may act on that feeling. But the problem is, is the moment that feeling leaves, they act in a completely opposite manner. And if you're loving to somebody for, you know, two weeks, and then week number three, you slash their tires and stick ice picks in their eyeballs, the two weeks that they were loving and kind to you are meaningless. And in fact, the pain you experience when somebody you love and has, and am bonded to and trusted turns around and harms you, it doesn't matter that they can't feel anything. It doesn't matter that they that they're not connected to any feeling, or or that they're you know ab, you know taken over by some delusion that you're out to destroy them. Those things do not explain away what happens, and it's important you understand that. True empathy is something that happens over a long period of time. A truly empathetic person will not change their character, will not change their behavior based on a feeling. All right. That's it. Talk to you next time.